At the Roseville Opera House in 1856, Susan B. Anthony called to anyone in the audience in favor of women's suffrage to rise. The first person to rise was eight-year-old Emma Smith. Anthony responded, a little child shall lead you. This experience instilled in Emma a lifelong interest in women's suffrage. I recently learned about Emma Smith. She was born in Roseville, and after attending Eureka College, she married Henry DeVoe. They moved to the Dakota Territories, where in the 1890s, she participated in successful suffrage campaigns. Susan B. Anthony was often a guest at the DeVoe House. She became a paid organizer for the National American Women's Suffrage Association, working to establish 28 chapters in 28 states. Like Anthony, she took what was known as a non-confrontational approach as to not alienate male legislatures. Doc History has documented that this approach led to racist strategies against people of color. In 1910, she continued her work to help gain women the right to vote in Washington state. From Emma's story, I learned that history is messy. People can have the conviction to stand up for their beliefs while not being able to see clearly the consequences of their actions. As I study history, I realize that there are many sides to the story that need to be told. There's always more to learn. You know, we're all a work in progress and we need to make an effort to gain an in-depth understanding. Now, Aunt Josie, she didn't shy away from difficult situations. Josie Westfall established the McDonough County Orphanage where she was hired to take care of countless children. She filled that role for 27 years as caretaker. It was considered at the time a well-suited position for a woman. In 1914, she was the first woman to run for Macomb City Judge, a role not considered, at the time, appropriate for women. Josie Westfall, like most of us, was complex. She didn't fit into a single narrative that history often constructs. Like us, I cannot help to believe that she was not shaped by the news of the issues facing the country of her time, like the women's suffrage movement. I was really curious about her choice to run in the election of 1914, because a lot was happening at that time around women's rights. Did she know about that unprecedented and widely reported suffrage parade that took place in March of 1913 in Washington, D.C.? with delegates from across the country, including Illinois. That same year, Josie surely knew about the passage of the Illinois Presidential and Municipal Voting Act that became part of a groundswell of support for the suffrage movement. That act allows women to vote for president and non-constitutional offices, anything that wasn't defined in the Constitution, like school board. In the state of Illinois, the first election women were allowed to vote was the year that Josie ran for city judge. As you can imagine, Josie's run for judge against a trained lawyer caused a stir. The Macomb Daily Journal, just days before the June 1st election, reported that questions had been raised about her qualifications to hold position of judge. She had no legal training. It was concluded by lawyers that the right to vote carries with it the right to hold office. And guess what? She won. She received 839 votes to Franklin's 577. Josie carried every ward in the city although Franklin received 19 more male votes in the fourth ward. These numbers indicate that Josie was well-respected. 
The suffrage movement often placed well-respected women who worked in social services, like Josie, at the forefront to push boundaries. The goal was to show that women had the capacity to play a role in government. And the suffrage movement took notice. The New York-based Independent, a weekly newspaper dedicated to women's suffrage, reported on July 6th of 1914 that Illinois women are eager for political activity and that is now open to them. And then the report went on to report in detail Josie's victory over Dean Franklin. Dean Franklin launches a series of lawsuits to unseat Josie. The case is finally decided by the Illinois Supreme Court. It's worth noting that she served two years before the decision was handed down in April of 1916, and it was in favor of Dean Franklin. They stated that the city judge is a constitutional office, and women do not have a right to vote for this office. The women's votes would not be counted, and Franklin was declared the winner. He had just 19 more votes than Josie. Male votes. Was Josie Westfall an advocate for women's rights? I'm not sure. It's clear that she made choices that challenged the status quo. She put herself out there. She took action to affect the change. Where she was and with what she had. While she did not win the election, she showed women and everyone else what is possible with equality in voting rights. It's a message for us today to vote and to work to ensure that everyone has the possibility to vote. Thank you.